This is Twit. Sad note, but I think an important one. I never heard of Kathleen Booth. But maybe Mm. we should honor her. Passed away at the age of 100 this week. She invented assembly language. Oh, my God. Uh, She was born in Worcester, Worcester, Worcestershire, somewhere. Worcestershire, England. Worcestershire. 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 Like the sauce. Like the sauce. sauce. Worcestershire. Uh, In 1922, she, uh, during World War II, she got a bachelor's in mathematics Became a junior scientific officer at the Royal Aircraft Establishment, a research organization. Two years later, became a research assistant at Birkbeck College. Worked at the British Rubber Producers Research Association. That's where she met her future husband, mathematician Donald Booth. In 1940... Oh, he's famous. Booth is more famous. Yeah, probably. Of course, because he's a guy. <laughs> right? Right? Uh, in 1946... Uh, she collaborated uh, with uh, uh, Britain. I don't know who Britain is. Another, another. Uh, oh, wait a minute. That's her maiden name. Sorry, Kathleen yeah. Britain and Booth. Like, they weren't like yet composer. married. Collaborated at Birkbeck on the automatic relay calculator, founding, in effect, the Department of Computer Science and Information Systems. If there aren't any computers, you can't really have a computer science department. Uh, they built it. Uh, she and her fellow researcher, Xenia Sweeting, built the hardware. They often did have women build these because they had finer motor skills and they were able to do the, f- the fine wiring and so forth on the early computers. Plus, women were the first computers back when it was pencil and paper. Uh, women were com- com- you know, computing the, tra- the trajectories of mortar rounds and things on pencil and paper, even if you saw... Uh, that wonderful movie uh, about NASA even doing uh, planetary uh, trajectories. Um, what was that movie? Hidden oh, Figures. God. Such a great movie. Hidden uh, Figures. Yeah, Hidden, Hidden Figures, figures yeah. Um, so eventually, she actually, Bernal uh, got funding from the Rockefeller Foundation for Booth and Britain to visit the Institute of Advanced Study at Princeton. Uh, that was where, uh, of course, Al- Albert Einstein was. Um, the only Dream person who would talk to them yeah. at the time was this guy named John von Neumann, <laughs> who explained his concept of uh, computing, which we now call the von Neumann architecture, the kind of the uh, archetypal computing architecture. They heard this and said, ah, oh. went back to Britain, redesigned their calculator as a von Neumann machine, inventing the first drum memory. In 1948, they moved on to this this next generation, the third generation, the simple electronic computer, and then the all-purpose electronic X-ray computer, or Ape XC, later so- sold as HEC by the British Tabulating Machine Company. Uh, there it is. There's a HEC uh, with Ray Bird right there. She married uh, Booth, became Kathleen Booth in 1950, got a PhD in applied mathematics from the University of London. They built the hardware. She wrote all the software for the ARC-2 and the SEC machines in the process inventing what she called contracted notation. We know it better now as assembly language, writing at the level of the actual processor. She also invented asynchronous operation in a book she wrote in 1958 called Programming for an Automatic Digital Calculator, one of the first programming books written by a woman. Uh... We, we talk so little about the women who were so important to the early days of computing. Uh, and I had never heard of Kathleen Booth, but uh, I think we should, on her passing, uh, mark her mass, uh, really amazing uh, contributions to the science. 100 years old, Kathleen Booth, one of the last of the early computer pioneers. May she Fun story about John von Neumann, who is Hungarian. Um, he also, he didn't think that uh, we should be afraid of nuclear power. And he was invited to watch the bomb go off and he actually exposed himself purposely to the radiation. He flashed the flash? And died of cancer. Yeah, he did. N- much later, not immediately. Yeah, well, 1957. <laughs> yeah. He, he died in age 53. Yeah, but he worked on the Manhattan yeah. Project. I just read a really good uh, book about him. They didn't mention him flashing the bomb. Wow. Uh, wow. So it cost him. 
Um, what was the book I just read? It was, it, it was you really read a whole, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. No, no, no. I think they probably that thought that was maybe a little too salacious of a detail. Um, the book actually was only about half about John von Neumann. Um, it was mostly about the, his era and the Hungarian geniuses who, um, um, uh, you know, came out of Hungary pre-war who were really massively uh, important to everything that we know of as modern physics, modern computing. He, the book was uh, by Ananyo Bhattacharya called The Man from the Future. And mm. uh, quite, I highly recommend it if you haven't read it. And since you sound like you're interested in John von Neumann and his genitals, you might want to read this. Genitals? <laughs> 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 well, what did he flash? Is that all he exposed? What else did he what expose? Did he expose? I, I had he not heard that. His body. Exposed his body. His body. What? Oh, his body. he didn't take off his clothes. He just stood there. No, no, no. Oh, I thought he flashed him. No. No, I thought he had a raincoat and did like this. Oh. He, no, <laughs> his lead, he's had his lead line raincoat that he, <laughs> he could open up. Uh, amazing genius. I mean, uh, yeah. a brilliant mathematician. And yeah, the John von Neumann architecture, the von Neumann architecture is how we compute these days. He was the guy who thought of stored memory, programs load from stored memory into RAM. None of this existed. Run in RAM. He thought about that whole thing. That's the architecture we know as modern computing. So um, anyway. What else you got? What else you got, Leo? That's it. I like to end with obituaries <laughs> because, as you know, as we get older, those yeah. are the things that tell us we're still alive. 